Welcome back to the channel. My name's Claire. So in today's video, I thought we would discuss minimalism. Yes, you heard me right. Me, minimalism. I've been thinking about it more and more these last few months and I'm edging closer and closer towards it. So in this video, I thought we would discuss what minimalism is. Don't take a shot every time I say minimalism, will you? I'm trying so hard not to mess that word up. So we will discuss what it is, some pros, some cons, and whether it's really for me and by proxy for you as well. A portion of this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's get into the video. The literal definition of minimalism is this. A deliberate lack of decoration or adornment in style or design. But I would say there's a culture on YouTube of minimalism and probably out in the wider world as well, that minimalism goes further than just style or decor. It actually goes into every aspect of our lives. Although the official definition is quite short and succinct, I think the real life definition goes a lot further. According to the minimalist.com, minimalism is a tool that can assist you in finding freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from worry, freedom from overwhelm, freedom from guilt, freedom from depression, freedom from the trappings of the consumer culture that we've built our lives around. Real freedom. Jessica Rose Williams, who has a channel here on YouTube, talks about minimalism as the idea that having less clutter will transcend to a less cluttered mind, being able to live a clearer, cleaner and more intentional life. These are all things that are luring me in towards minimalism. What about you? Let me know down below. Now, as I say, I've been thinking a lot about minimalism over the last few months. And to me, it seems like minimalism is on a spectrum. I haven't seen anyone else describe it as such, but for me, at one end of the spectrum, you've got decluttering maybe once every six months or once every year. And at the other end, you've got a really strict form of minimalism where you have nothing extra in your home. It's like a hotel room and you adhere to these very, very strict rules. Perhaps you won't have a car, you won't have children, um, you live every decision through the minimalism framework. At its core, being a minimalist means intentionally promoting the things we value most and removing everything that distracts us from around it. And that is from becomingminimalist.com. And that's a very good point. And that's why we can only use the rules of minim minimalism quite loosely because our values, what we hold dear to ourselves is different for every person. For one person, decluttering once a year is a huge task and something that they don't take lightly and they value everything in their home, but they've got to make this decision between this thing and this thing and which one they're going to let go when they love them equally. Whereas you've got someone else who's a regular declutterer, a regular minimalist, someone who does not put any kind of value or worth or extra meaning, I guess, on items, on material items. And so they can let those things go very, very easily. And so the way we do see minimalism has got to be a very individual thing. And if you take nothing from this video, I would love you to take the idea that we can look at this framework, see what works for us, and then discard the rest. As long as we are making some changes, changes that benefit us, that improve our lives, then we cannot ask for more than that. I hinted, I hinted at this before, but there are these strict minimalists. No shade to them, but I can't fathom how they live in the way they do. Some prescribe to the idea that they don't own a car, which I don't own a car, but not because I'm an a min, not because I'm an a min, can't speak, not because I'm a minimalist, because I'm not, but because I just can't afford a car. But there are those that make the decision based on being a min, minimalist that they will not have a car. Some will say they won't have children. Some will say they won't have plants in the house. Just really, really strict ways of living and their, I was going to say their hotel, their home looks like a hotel. You walk into it, 
aside from being a minimalist home, which is a character all of its own, it doesn't really tell you anything about the people that live there. You might be screaming at the YouTubes right now. Honestly, you really, really might. Because you might be thinking, but I am a rule follower. I want to follow the rules, but this is far too strict for me. Well, thinking about it, like objectively, you know, if you've got a really big car to cart six children to school every day and you're going to think, OK, I can't be a minimalist because I can't get rid of the kids, can I? Well, no, 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 you can't get rid of the kids um, and you need the car to get them to school. So although you want to make these kinds of improvements in your life, you can't because you can't be a true minimalist if you are not adhering to all the rules. Bugger that, I say, bugger that. Because if you've got free cars and you love those cars and you use those cars and you want those cars, keep them and still adhere to minimalism. How? How? Well, Mary Kondo, or Marie Kondo, or Komari, as she is quite known, who wrote the book, The Life-Changing Habits of Cleaning Up, I think. I've sort of read half of it, but I gave up on it. Anyway, she talks about keeping things that bring joy or spark joy are the words that she actually used. So I believe, I don't know, I haven't watched the TV series, but I believe you hold an item and you ask yourself, does this bring me joy? So do I have pleasure in owning this? If it doesn't necessarily bring joy and it's not functional, but you do have a need for it, by all means, keep it. Find a reason to keep the things that you want to keep. And it might just bring up the idea that you've got a lot of stuff that you can let go. It's just sitting there because it's sitting there. These things sound really good to me. I think they're a useful barometer for helping you decide on what to get rid of and what to keep. If you're liking my content so far, do consider hitting that subscribe button because there's going to be lots of this type of video coming to you soon. Now, I have to be really, really honest. I have to hold my hands up here and say, I am no expert at minimalism, decluttering, any of it. I really am not. I'm learning and I thought I would share my process with you, which is why I'm sharing these videos and these types of videos. So please don't take anything I'm saying as me dictating to you because it's really not. And I might have got something wrong. Do leave me a comment down below if that's the case. So something I've been doing, I've been reading books on minimalism, but I've also been watching a lot of other channels that talk about minimalism. Some channels that I have found really useful are Ashlyn Eaton. Absolutely love her channel as much as much for the aesthetics as for the content, but she's got some fantastic minimalism videos over there. I'm also loving Natalie Bennett. Now, she's a bit of a mixed channel, more of a family channel, but she does talk about minimalism sometimes. I just love her content as well. She's a really down to earth girl. I know you'd love her if you don't know her already. So Slice of Light is another channel. I've come across Aileen, who's a psychologist. She's got a PhD in psychology and she talks more about the psychology of minimalism, which I found really, really interesting. Jessica Rose Williams, who I did mention with one of my quotes earlier, love her channel. Again, the aesthetics are lovely. She's a really sweet English girl. So do check her out. She talks a lot about minimalism and her home is absolutely lovely. Another one you probably all know, and that is a minimal mum or the min minimal mum. Can't remember exactly what it's called. But anyway, I will have links to all of these people down below. So do check them out after my videos finish. Send some love and let them know that I sent you. Another thing that I have found really useful in my learning is to take Skillshare courses. So that is a really good segue into letting you know that part of today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. I've been watching all the minimalism classes. Honestly, I have. And there is one that really sticks out that I think you will love as well. And that is 
Everyday Minimalism, Finding Calm and Creativity in Living Simply by Erin Boyle. So what drew me into this class specifically was that she talks about calm as someone with a lot of anxiety. This is one of the main reasons that I am looking into a more minimalist lifestyle because I feel that all this clutter is doing nothing for my anxiety. And what really, really hooked me in once I started watching this course was that she talks about minimalism doesn't have to be grabbing a black bin bag, shoving everything in it, taking it to the dump and starting over afresh. Although that is tempting at times, it honestly is tempting, but it doesn't have to mean that. And it can mean whatever it wants to you as an individual. You have to find value in what you're doing. And as you know, if you've been listening so far, that is where I'm coming from, from within minimalism. I'm learning a lot from Erin's course and lots of other courses as well. So honestly, if you are looking to learn a new skill, develop a skill that you already have further, then Skillshare is the place to do it. They have a wide range of courses on the platform, everything from sewing to graphic design to business to minimalism and much, much more as well. There are no ads on the platform, so you can really concentrate on what you are learning, which is absolutely fantastic. New classes are being uploaded every week, so there's always something new to learn. And the classes not only come in English, but they also come in Portuguese, Spanish and German. So I've got some absolutely fantastic news. The first thousand people to use my code Penguin and Pear will receive one month's free trial of Skillshare. You can find all the details downstairs in my description box. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this portion of the video. So we've talked a bit about what minimalism is, and I think it's time that we do some reflecting about what sort of personality we are. For me, growing up when I was a teen, when I was in my early 20s, I was the declutter queen. I honestly was. I was getting rid of stuff left, right and centre like it was going out of fashion. One in, one out. That was me. On the sad side, I've got very little from those earlier years. I've got one thing from my childhood, and that is this little doggy here. Now, this little doggy was a present for me. I think it was for Christmas when I was 12 years old. He was a present from my aunt. Hi, auntie, if you are watching. I remember a few years ago thinking about this and thinking how sad it was that I had nothing from my past. But my mindset was very different. I liked shopping. You know, I had in my mind, in order to be really settled and comfortable in your life, you want to have lots of things in your home. It's almost almost like a sign of success if you've got a really full home, a home with a lot of stuff. And I don't know where that mindset's come from. So I started getting a lot of things in the home and I wasn't getting rid of anything. But it got to the point where I ended up with too much clutter. I can't breathe. I can't think. I can't move around. Cleaning up is a complete nightmare if I can manage it at all. And it got to the point where I started to get fed up of it. I remember the first time, I think it was Alicia had sent me a video on minimalism. And it was probably about 18 months ago. And I watched this minimalism video and I thought, oh, that's not for me. And now here I am doing a minimalism video. So it shows how far we can come, no matter what our personality, what we're, where we're coming from, we can change if we want to. Now the tide has turned. I have come to the point where I want less. To me, less is more. Now I don't want nothing. I honestly do not want nothing. I want some stuff, but I just want it a bit more under control with organisation as well. So let's talk about how this is going to improve my life psychologically and potentially improve your life as well. There's the saying that a tidy house equals a tidy mind. Uh, well, in that case, my mind is completely scrambled. Honestly, it is. So I have talked to you in previous videos about wanting to improve my life. I love this quote. The first step in crafting the life you want is to get rid of everything you don't. 
by Joshua Baker. So this is why I've made a start decluttering and I've been videoing it all along. That is so great for being able to see back in time and referring back to it. But if you haven't seen any of my declutter videos, I will link them down below. So I have to say that when I have decluttered a little bit and I am doing it a little bit at a time because of my chronic illness, I get such a sense of clarity. I can't explain it. It's really hard to explain, but it's like when I've completed my declutter and I've reorganized the area, say, for example, my Calyx unit, which was a previous video I did, it was a really weird feeling, but one that I really, really welcomed. It gave me that impetus. It was just a little tiny area, but it bought great big dividends for me. And so I think by the time I've done the whole house, I am going to feel a million times better. I feel like I feel a lot less laden down with things or feel a lot lighter, a lot freer, as that quote at the beginning of the video suggested. And that's got to be my aim. If you're in a similar predicament where you want to improve your life, this might well be something for you to look at yourself. It really depends on your personality, whether you feel that you love the clutter that you've got around you or whether you do want less. But if you do want less, it may be something to consider. Another part of this whole process that I really have been enjoying is organisation. I mean, with decluttering and minimalism, organisation is kind of the next step. It's kind of inevitable. Maybe not if you're a complete minimalist where you don't have anything in your home, so there's nothing to organise. But for me, trying to find a middle ground. With the couple of bits I have decluttered so far, the kitchen and the Calyx unit, I found that organisation was key to making me feel like a sense of achievement at the end. Even now, when I go and open the drawers in the kitchen, I've got these bins organised in the drawers and I know where everything is. There's no clutter. It makes life easier from a functional standpoint. It makes life a lot easier, but it's also nice to look at and see that it's not just a big mess in that drawer like it used to be. I'd say it's kind of life changing, really. It sounds a bit insane to say that a bit of organisation is life changing, but when you live a scrambled life like me, a chronically ill life like me, a very, very limited energy life like me, then it makes all the difference. So how is this going to benefit me physically and potentially you physically as well? Infinitely, hopefully, maybe not at all, but I would hope infinitely. Otherwise, this is a lot of effort for nothing. For me, one of the hardest things of dealing with chronic illness is not the pain, it's not the fatigue, it's not the multitude of other symptoms that come with it. It's not even a struggling to be believed when you've got a condition that people cannot see. It's the housework because I spend a lot of time in my home and being surrounded by clutter, being surrounded by a mess is really, really disheartening. When I'm laying in bed and I can barely sit up and all I can see is a mess around me and that it should be cleaned up, I have a real hard sort of, I have a real hard time sort of justifying not doing it in my head, even though I'm laying there, my body desperately needs rest and relaxation. And part of me is going, you should be doing this, you should be doing this. My aim with all of this as well is to have a home that is easier to clean and keep up. I live with my husband, but he's not a housekeeper by any stretch of the imagination. The housework's kind of just left to me. He will do some now and again if I if I ask him, you know, like six times, can you do it? But in most cases, it's easier for me to just do it myself. Now, he does work full time, so I'm not too hard on him with this, to be honest, because he's working full time and I'm not able to. So it is what it is, but sometimes it means we live in a messy house. I have to say, when I do look at these strict minimalism videos on YouTube, there's nothing in the house, and that must be an absolute godsend to be tidying up, don't you think? One whiz around with a duster, job done. And although I don't want to go that far, you know, it's a balancing act. To be in a position where I'm not constantly in a loop of trying to catch up with the housework, 
cleaning his mess up, cleaning my mess up because I am a messy person. So if I can get to a position where there is not so much to clean, that would be grand. If you made it this far, we're not finished yet. We're not finished yet. So don't don't get excited and press the exit button. Honestly, I need you right to the end. You and me, we got to overcome this algorithm. But I'm just going to say that if you have made it this far, leave me an emoji down below if you can. Uh, leave me a face emoji that shows some kind of expression about how you feel about minimalism. So let's talk about some of the negatives that I see within minimalism from what I can like make out. As we talked about, I don't want to live in a barely there home, somewhere it looks like you don't live. Because I'll be end up being too scared to actually live in my home or put the remote on the side. If I even had a remote, yeah, we don't want to go far, far, far. I think there is a dark, toxic side to minimalism that just does go far too far. This has already happened. I've only just started my decluttering, but this has already happened where I am scared that if I declutter something, give it away, donate it, whatever I do with it, I will then end up needing the thing. And this has happened, I think, twice already. Um, I can acknowledge that it comes from a position of scarcity and that's not a good position to be in. But the fact is I'm on a very limited income and I can't necessarily afford to replace the things I have. So I do have to be a bit careful and it's just working around that, I would say. But that is an issue that we are decluttering a lot of stuff and getting rid of a lot of stuff. Probably not great for the environment as well. But as long as we're donating and letting someone else make use of those things, no harm done. Another issue I foresee is that hubby is not a minimalist by nature. And I am trying to be. So he kind of is and he isn't. He's not someone who goes shopping a lot. In fact, he rarely goes shopping for other than food. Food is the thing that he loves to shop for. So I'm the shopper in the two of us. I'm the one with the Amazon account. He likes to go charity shopping and he'll bring all sorts of junk in the house. Honestly, he will. Um, so when he brings that stuff in, it never really tends to leave. So I do wonder a bit further down the road when I'm more clear of my stuff and he's not wanting to get rid of his stuff. Is that going to be an issue? Although saying that, I have to say, I have to acknowledge his attitude so far has been fantastic fantastic with that soon as i started declutter and he said he wanted to declutter his cds now he must have had like over 500 and he donated them all to the charity shop gave us a lot more room instantly he's also mentioned wanting to declutter his bookshelf he's actually asked if he can do a video about that so you might see that let me know down below if you want to see a video from him where he declutters his shelf the other issue that I foresee coming up is that I create this new way of living for myself that I then can't keep up with. And that shouldn't happen because I should be giving myself less work over time because I have less, less stuff. So is minimalism for me in its purest form? No, but I think I can adapt it to my own needs in a way that is going to improve my life. To be honest, I'm excited to see where it's going to take me. I certainly intend to keep on decluttering, organising, cleaning, all the rest and bringing you along on it. So if you haven't seen my previous decluttering videos, you can check them here in a playlist and that will be a fantastic start. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.